segue. Going back on topic. <laughs> well, yeah, actual like because yeah, once once they find die. their keys, because they have to kill someone in the dream to, and they might drop a key like a rare drop in a video game, uh, and usually it happens after they've discovered something about themselves, and then it's like moving on. It's like moving on from purgatory, um, and in the greater context of the manga, it means something else. But we'll get into that in a bit, I think, and it's it's super interesting. Um, Having read it for the first time, what did you think about the hunt for the keys at first? Was that just confusing, or or were you trying to put together like theories? Um, I was trying to like think of like it more as it's, they've got to be metaphors for something, and like mm. and but I I was very much convinced for Raj pa- pa- part of it that they shouldn't go through that door. Mm. So I was very much like thinking that the the nurse that has set this up has told them that they have to hunt the key so they all think they're meant to be hunting this key to escape onto the next thing but really when they escape there was something else that possibly could be worse than their reality mm. they were in because until i totally pieced it together i'm like if you because they kept disappearing from classes and things and like they were just gone and i'm like mm-hmm. how could you go on to a better place if you've been erased from your life yeah, these people are being all... erased yeah, and they were all in that one room, so it's not like they died because the corpse would be there, unless the nurse is really good at cleaning. Yeah. So you just, they're just whew, nowhere to be found ever again. And so, yeah, the characters don't know what the hell's even going on. So, yeah, there is that element of, do I want to get out of this? What's going on next? Which is uh, actually a really good closet metaphor, among other things. Yes. So I had, uh, a, had a lot of thinking about, like, okay, so at what point is the dream the dream and the reality the reality? But then... Mm-hmm. If they get out of the dream, they seem to pass on to another plane of its ex- existence that erases them from their realities. And if they're erased from reality, then how are they ever going to truly deal with what they've chosen to become? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, okay. Let's see. Let's go for spoiler, full-on so spoiler territory warning. Let's describe the, the ending and some of the stuff leading up to it and what we think about the whole thing as a concept. So, the ending. If, if you want to describe it, actually, since I, I've been talking a lot, I feel. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Well, depends where you want me to start with the ending. It's like a like. Okay, so they're going. Into, the last time they went into the dream, there's a lot of tensions running high. There's a all, lot going the characters on. Have, there's a characters have all figured out big things about themselves, but there's still a lot of tension and bloodlust. Yeah, dreams people are on. like not quite a hundred percent on their identity. And then, I mean, one of the most interesting developments to me is Sos because he at first presented as like confident then bit of a dick then actually kind of just hurt puppy and then i was just like and then like oh really severe angst and then like oh my god your sister and then i was like oh bonus incest oh my goodness i love you (laughs) manga (laughs) and then i was like no no she's not and then it's like oh god please please just save him by the end of it i wanted like more than the main character to like find their identity i was like can we save so from all this Stuff that's been thrown out. Like, Did you like he... how he literally became a hurt puppy as well? Yeah, literally. <laughs> I was just like... He discovered a thing and then his form changed, uh, which which happens to, I think, just the two the two non-main characters. Well, actually, yeah. I guess all three of them, in a sense, uh, go through a transformation like that. Yeah, because she becomes a different kind of knight. Yeah. She becomes so... a, her own saviour. Yeah, so... Uh, her... And he becomes a more loyal dog, which is cool. Which is quite sweet. But it's like... So, romance-wise, I was totally for so because I felt like the romance with I can't remember her name now, I keep calling her Umbrella Girl now, which I'll, is I'll awful. Look it up. Keep going. Is I felt that like our main character, Mashiro, yeah, wasn't truly what they wanted to be when they were with her. It's like <laughs> they were like, I'm going to be male and this is how men act and because I'm a man I must protect this girl. Mm-hmm. Uh Kureha. <laughs> Korea, that's it, of course. And I was like, it didn't feel like a real relationship. It felt mm. like they were kind of not using each other because they clearly cared, but mm. they were just being safe. So it was yeah. there was no. They were doing what was expected of them. Yeah, it extent. wasn't taking any risks with the relationships and wasn't yeah. actually going to help them overcome yeah. their problems because they would find their own little bubble that was yeah. like, you know, it's like, no, this. They were, they were doing what is culturally understood to be 
a good, safe idea, correct? Down to the point where they reenacted Romeo and Juliet. Being like, <laughs> yeah. This is the archetypal heteronormative fantasy love thing with no complications. And it's yeah, like, it's like it's like it's no, just it's... it's just too nice. Yeah. And real relationships <laughs> need a bit of messy and then so yeah, exactly. who was just like, Okay, yeah, you're a bit of a dick, so I'm not entirely sure. Maybe actually I think like the the kendo like <laughs> guy. I was actually you know yeah. what? Go with him. Go with him. Because yeah. and then I was like, actually, no, you're even a bigger dick because you're <laughs> actually just been playing your own things. And I'm like, you know what? Look after yourself first. Get mm. over your issues and then go save So because mm -hmm. So leads like not to yeah. be horrendously manipulated by his sister and his oh, family. Mm -hmm. And by the time I started finding out about like how he'd just been abandoned and he'd got his own literally own ghost following him around kind of ruining his life i'm like oh that boy's got some baggage yeah. and then i'm like oh that's what i love about the the, the romeo and juliet thing they're looking as well because like romeo and juliet uh ultimately it's about two people so perfectly in love and everyone else is the problem whereas more realistically there's problems all over the fucking place and you may be in a happy-ish relationship, but if you've got issues going in there, you're going to have to work through them. And maybe it won't work out in the end. And that's what I like about this, is that everyone's problems ultimately are their own to deal the fuck with. Yeah. And and yeah, and if they do, then they're better off for it. And if they don't, then it, it kind of meets sad, vanishing ends in yeah. many cases. So as it was going along, I started thinking that our main character was either, like, in a coma. At first I was going through, like, conjoined twins, conjoined twins, Ooh. and they're in surgery, and only one of them is going to survive. And so metaphorical dream state, okay. Yeah, so okay. I went with that for a little while, and I was very convinced on the twin thing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, definitely conjoined twins. Got to be something like that. And then they just kept talking like there was a crescent moon in the circles and like, mm -hmm. and then like kind of the idea of like, and I was like, and then they started like showing scenes of like a pregnancy ward. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. In, I got twins. Life. So, you know, I felt quite good with myself <laughs> going, oh yeah. But the minute I saw that they were, that, that random scene a little bit earlier about people being in, a hospital room and chatting and using characters names i'm like this is literally about birth and like mm -hmm. and how you are born is what you are mm -hmm. and so many possibilities it's yeah oh i loved it so in, in the last time they go into the dream there's all this stuff happening and the dream starts falling apart and they're like okay mashiro you are the only one who's not actually figured yourself the fuck out, but we both care about you, and we think you need to get the fuck out of here and get a key. So we're gonna go around and kill everybody! <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go full, With our yeah. incredible, like, leveled up Digivolution powers of having solved their own problems to gain new forms. Yeah. And they find a key. Uh, was it inside one of them, I think? It was... Oof. Was it, it was something, it was something harsh, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so they, they get the key... Uh, and they go to the big door, and the whole thing is falling apart. And back in the, they they all wake up and go back to the the kind of nurses' room, and it's still crumbling. And all the characters are like, "What the fuck is going on? We're out yeah. of the dream. What's happening? Is this Inception?" And they're like, "Look, we just have to hope for Mashiro because we're not going to make it. We're not going to. It's fine. It's fine. Let's just hope somebody makes it out of here." And Mashiro gets to the entrance, and the nurses like, "You sure you want to do this?" And they open it, and then birth. But, yeah, and yeah, it reveals it was it was a kind of dream metaphor tale of a set of twins being born, and only one could survive. And was the other one stillborn, I think? And one was a boy, and one was a girl. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah, it was like, which one will it be? So many possibilities. And and yeah, you have this this aftermath scene of a, a young girl going to to high school, and she's aware that she had a wait, no he. She? She. She. Oh, yep. Yeah. He's melted start and then female. Yeah. Time. That she had a brother and he was stillborn and she still tries to remember him and think about it. Yeah. It's a pendant that's metaphorical. And I then think... I like how I like how the, at the end of the one I read, um, which I think is the one I linked to you, so it should be the same. There's the explanation of, so much like the Western phrase, a bun in the oven, there's the Japanese kind of yeah. phrase of a bird in a cage, meaning pregnancy. 
and all the way through it there are yeah. keys and birds in cages as things and cages around and birds and it's a it's a big lot of symbolism and suddenly it's just like, it's like this epiphany. entire thing makes sense this is incredibly well written and yeah arted and you're right the flowers being minimal so many bits hidden throughout of like seeding ideas and metaphors and like what could this mean maybe you'll find mm. out maybe you won't it's it's so well done. I loved it so much. Oh, it's just yeah. yeah. I think I think what really touched base with the ending is the fact that, and this is probably quite personal for me, but I was twin, so I oh. was yeah. So I was female, brother Michael, but he was um, stillborn. Oh so, God. <laughs> so I'm the odds of this. <laughs> So I was sitting there at the end of it, and I've always had this thing that because I'm kind of slightly masculine for mm -hmm. a girl, and I've always taught myself, yeah, gender's kind of like not quite so hard, like girl, boy. And I've always thought, you know what? I'm going to be the kind of girl that has a lot of masculine attributes and pursuits and interests because then at least that like Michael can have like part of this life I've let I've, I live for him as well so it just it feels like you know whatever like got left over oh, wow. from that so mm. I literally got to the end of this and just this girl who's like you know sporty and kind of going oh yes like he and I'm sitting there going jigga what <laughs> 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 like... oh my god <laughs> I know if she, like... if she went on to do a, a podcast that would just be so, or a blog it would be so perfect <laughs> different time Basically. though <laughs> and I was just like you couldn't have had an ending that I sat there kind of going I did this. <laughs> like, for all I know, I was having existential crises in the womb and magical dream sequences. <laughs> like, I'm pretty frigging, like, imaginative, and there's a lot of weird whirly gigs that go on in my head. Mm. So I'm like, and it's like, how have I come full circle? I'm now reading a manga about, like, what is your gender identification? Where I was like, well, all that trouble in my youth for, like, like going, am I gay? Am I straight? Am I bi? Like... Mm all of those factors and going well i'm clearly physically female but i don't want to be a girl mm -hmm. and it's like it's kind of like playing that out and then going actually you know what now i do really like being a girl i just like mm -hmm. also being a slightly masculine one that you know mm -hmm. likes things that aren't typically girlish mm -hmm. and it was just so weird that the end of this book was literally like yeah i yeah. know that i know that i oh, lost yeah, my brother like sporty one yeah oh wow well, I had no idea about that, so coincidence. <laughs> I know, I was just like, <laughs> it's like, it's such a, it's not a thing that you normally talk about. Hey, I'm Zoe, and yeah, I was a twin, but my brother didn't survive because I stole his nutrients. Like, it's not really like the conversation that comes up when you meet new people. <laughs> but I'm literally, I was like reading this thing going, oh my goodness. Like, yeah, it just proves wow. that manga can mm -hmm. deal with absolutely everything. And there's an idea of thought or something out there there is a manga that goes we've also thought about this too and this mm -hmm. these things happen in reality even though manga dreams them and reinterprets mm -hmm. them and stuff it's all based on things that like people have experienced so it was quite like oh this, this yeah. touched home this uh, yeah ultimately after school nightmare is such an interesting one because it's it it, it will appeal to people who like fight of the week kind of violence it will and superpowers it'll appeal to people who love good metaphorical horror uh to people who love a little bit of romance because there's definitely a lot of that and and then there's this whole big kind of overarching idea of getting over your kind of issues or insecurities or pdsd or whatever is hard and it'll probably be lifelong and that's okay, but if you get through it, you will be better off for it, and you can yeah. carve your own destiny. And that's a lot of what, what it was about, is about they became more like themselves once they were able to step out of those things. And well, hence why um, uh, Kareha, in the dream afterwards, looked a lot more like her, her current self. Yeah. And so becomes a dog, which is adorable and awesome. I know, um, I love the fact that I was like, oh my god, he's just he's just wounded puppy. And it's like, oh my god, you've turned into wounded puppy. <laughs> exactly. Like... Yeah, and, and Mashira was very much, you know, figure it out, experiment, see what you want to do, and then just go for it. Just yeah. go for it. And there isn't with it. totally right answers. You're allowed to make mistakes and things. I don't know, it's, it, it had a lot that would touch base for yeah, people, I think. Yeah, you're allowed to make mistakes as long as you apologise to the people you hurt, which is another good one. Yeah. Because <laughs> that, oh, that, that so often isn't 
this isn't brought up. <laughs> no, it's okay to make mistakes. Yeah, but you also need to apologize for those mistakes. It's cool. It's cool. You know, this is why I'm. That's why I'm so psyched to get uh, Macklemore's new album because there's a whole track. There's like a ten-minute beat poem about. So I made this album that was trying to be positive, and then people liked it, and people hated it, and I wasn't really sure what to do, and I didn't know if I wanted to create anything anymore at all. And then I realized, fuck it, if I <laughs> keep making and try to do something good and tell people this is what I aim for, maybe I'll help people? And it's it's just such a, it's not a song of, I'm great, or I'm triumphant, a song of, everything is complicated, but F it, I like making music and I want to do it for good reasons. I was like, yes! This is a thing I want more of. Oh, and yeah, after school totally does that for me. With the oh. ideas of them being in the school, <laughs> I don't know if you may have read this differently, but oh, I was thinking very much that in the actual schools is kind of like this soul holding pen. And basically, ah. whatever trauma they'd gone through in their life <laughs> when they died, because the soul's kind of eternal, and so it was their past life was where... Ooh, yeah. I can see that as a potential, uh, especially early on when you didn't know kind of what was going on. That could be definitely be one of the reasons. Although that, that's very similar to Angel Beats, which I hadn't seen at the time. Uh, Angel Beats another one where it's like, where are people vanishing to? <laughs> yeah, I've not seen Angel Beats, so I don't know. Oh, really? No. Uh, no. Very similar concept, very different execution. Um, unlike After School, Angel Beats is through and through a harem anime. Uh, yeah, uh, that's normally my like go to like nope nope yeah there are very few harem animes that i enjoy yeah reverse harems that yeah. could be fun that could be interesting and different like our in high school host club yeah i i cried to the end of that damn anime <laughs> that was an I amazing series yeah it's seriously good do you know if the, if the manga's much different because i've been tempted to read it for ages I don't know, actually. I've never read the manga. It's one of those Ooh. things that I think I should at some point, cause, mm -hmm. but I still haven't. One uh, of us will cave in at some point and then have to tell the other. Yeah. It's just like, and what's the other one that I'm... Oh, I really like. Um, Yamato no Deshko Shinji Hengi. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it's came out over here as the Wallflower. Oh. That sounds more like a thing. Hang it's on. the one where... There's four very attractive boys that live in a house, and the landlord is like, "You can continue living here rent free, but you've got to help my um my niece become a real girl." And she turns up, and I was just like, "I love you," because all she wants to do is sit alone in the dark in her bedroom, watching grotesque horror films and hanging out with her best friend, a skeleton and an organ puppet. And oh, the images for this are really good. And it's like, and what's and it's it's a lot of comedy in it and it's it does have that romance element eventually that it's more of them just kind of going but we're beautiful boys and all girls fancy us why won't she respond and she just like <laughs> takes one look at them and just nosebleeds and parts us out and is terrified by their shiny attractiveness and just wants to live in dark corners pretending that she's Sadako from the ring and it's just like and it turns out these boys are dysfunctional themselves and actually learn a little bit more about themselves by trying to like and it's like like don't have to be a typical girl to actually mm -hmm. still you know see this is the thing i love about a, a lot of kind of reverse harems is that they sneak up on you with some great stuff like fruits basket oh my first love fruits basket <laughs> just yeah, people be like, oh, it's for ha super happy fun times. We can't hug each other. Ooh, hijinks. I am damaged human. <laughs> yeah. I have many issues. <laughs> we are not happy. And it's yeah. like, don't worry, we'll go to our Manic's Pixie Dream Girl. Oh, sh sh turns out she has issues too. Oh, okay. I think we have to sit down and talk about this, because this is sad and hard for everybody. Let's stop punching each other for a moment and doing magical wazzy shit. <laughs> I love that. Also... Rin from Fruits Basket and this character from Wallflower. They look like they both have that thing where artists are like, I made that beautiful black hair, but the inking, the inking is taking so long! <laughs> Why did we do this? So much beautiful hair! Because <laughs> that's what um, Natsuki Takaya said in all the, the after sections after Rin appeared in Fruits Basket was, Oh, her hair is so beautiful, but the ink, it's slowly consuming my soul. <laughs> I can't go on. It's amazing. We've done a lot of good things. Were there any criticisms you felt of uh, after school? Like anything you wanted to see more of or differently? I mean, we both kind of wanted so to live, but yeah. ultimately, given the nature of the actual story, that, I guess that isn't really possible. But his soul Unless got reincarnated because he was in the train at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, 
So they've yeah. all meet each other. Normally that's corny, but at the same time, because there's so much about infinite possibility, it's like, yeah, go for it. I, 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 I needed that little moment. I was like, because by the mm -hmm. end of it, I was like, oh, I did get very frustrated. I suppose that's probably good, like, storytelling. I was like, like, are they? Aren't they? Oh, they're forgiving each other. No, they've had a misunderstanding. No, don't go there. No, <laughs> just if you just sat down and had a conversation, this would be something. Stop being so damn insecure. Exactly. And, oh, stop inviting people to your room because you know that someone else is going to knock on the door and go, oh, I see you're in that skirt. Quick, no. And all that, like, oh. To so the point when it was so, and the, the <laughs> kendo guy. And I was just like, ah, this is, this is driving me balmy. But I was like, just, 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 please be happy. Exactly. So, oh. but I still think it, it needed that. And I definitely, I like the idea that it used horror to work through, like, insecurity. Mm. And I like the fact that the whole thing was just about this character's, like, identity. And I really like the fact that gender is not defined by biological sex. And it's not like, it's about a combination of things and the way you just mm. are with different people. Mm. And ultimately you don't make connections with people because of your you know your sex organs you make them because you've found reasons to interact and be with them so i quite exactly mm -hmm. i liked that yeah oh. so yeah absolutely recommended um the other thing was uh <laughs> so last week last month even uh you were set at home with a film that you couldn't find in the end and this time i was set at home with a film that I thought I could finish in time for this, but it turns out <laughs> I misunderstood the length. Uh, it turns out Antique, the Korean adaptation of Antique's Bakery, is not one hour long, but two. <laughs> so I have another hour to watch. However, that's fine. It's it's past the point that I read in the, the manga, which I need to finish as well. And oh my god, it's a faithful adaptation! It's and it's really beautiful. good! It's like, it's not even like, oh, this is, this is the same, and it's nice, and it's light, and it's fluffy. It's, like, solidly well-directed. The music is solid. The dark elements just kind of come out of... Not out of nowhere, but you get to see them happening, and then people trying to bury them, and it's like, no, you, no, you need to work through that, and then they have to. And it sucks, and it's also great. It's, oh, it's such a good film. It was just, <laughs> it's just, like... And it's also, yeah. it's like having, like, you know, a gay rom-com where it's not like, oh, I've come out and that's, aha, oh, that's funny. It's mm. like, no, no, actually, it's just like one of the characters is gay, but it's about them just doing their thing and dealing with their issues and making beautiful cakes and, mm -hmm. like, having kind of those those romance elements and and dealing yeah. with things like abuse. I was like, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah, majorly. <laughs> like, my goodness. Mm -hmm. I would oh. love to have, like... Just, I would love it to be like another movie. I'd love to see what happens next, kind of thing. Just like more yeah. beautiful cakes and more like lovely romances. I need to, I need to finish the the manga series, and then, as I, I say here, um, Antiques Bakery, like Gravitation, is story that is safe for work, and well, at first anyway. <laughs> uh, in Gravitation's case, because it just gets more and more each time, uh, and then side stories that are not safe for work which don't need to be read to get the canon, but are in canon if you <laughs> wanted to see some more things, usually for money, yeah. which is a clever thing for an author to do. Yeah, that's especially... pretty, like, yeah, that's some, that's some shrewd working out there. Yeah, well, especially in this genre, because it's like, if it's safe for work, then it means that I can sell this anywhere. And if I have sexy stuff, I can sell it very much to specific people and not get my look shunned upon in any <laughs> particular areas. Yes, this is smart. Yeah, I, I appreciate the thought that's gone into that. And I have read a couple of the uh, additional things already, and they are solidly done. And very sexy. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, sorry. Uh, Antique, the 2008 Korean adaptation. Uh, you've seen the, uh, you've seen the uh, was it Japanese adaptation? I've which seen is... the anime, which is pretty oh, yeah. much follows the manga as far as I'm aware. And it mm. felt very similar, because I saw the anime first. So, and I remember... When I watched the Korean version, going, ah, oh, this, this reminds me of the anime. Mm -hmm. um, and then I attempted the Japanese live action and went, oh, <laughs> no, because yeah. obviously they take out the gay character. Mm -hmm. So he's not even in it. And they replace it with a female waitress. Making it all completely pointless. Yeah, because it's just like, it's just not, that wouldn't, no. Why would the what happens to the tension? What happens to the gay of demonic charm? What happens yeah, to... Yeah, like when you take out the gay of demonic charm and the fact that like he can't work anywhere 
And yeah. like, apart from with the one guy that turned him down, and he's kind of like, you know. Yeah. It's... That's oh, I say so. For people who have not read Antiques Bakery, it is a, it is the yaoi that absolutely everybody I know who's sick of certain yaoi tropes recommends as a great yaoi, uh, because there are characters with actual backstories and reasoning and depth. There's there's hijinks, there's romance, there's funny things, there's dark things, really dark things later on, and it's about a guy who's an amazing uh, chef, uh, pastry chef, baker, makes amazing cakes, delicious, amazing cakes. Yes, beautiful patisseries. Beautiful oh. cakes. But he is a gay of demonic charm, in that he is beautiful and slender and attractive. However, anyone that he finds attractive, like, if he so much as smiles at them in a sexy way, they are smitten with him. <laughs> immediately. Full on, my heart must belong to you, we must have sex right now. He, everyone is putty in his hands to the extent that he can't get them to leave him alone. And he loses so many jobs because can't stop people wanting to fuck him. <laughs> which causes, you know, marital issues and stalker issues and many, many problems like Actual that. Actual fights in the workplace. Fights in the workplace. Uh, until he finds the antique bakery, who is run by the one person who never turned him down, who appears to be very hetero, but we're not entirely sure, and it's never really clear, I think. Maybe yeah. it is. Later. Uh, that he has PTSD based upon being kidnapped as a kid and put through horrible abuse. And so he just appears to be straight up not not even acknowledging gay parts of his brain. It's not even working. So right. he doesn't feel anything uh, for him whatsoever. And it's it's about that kind of thing being heavily damaging. And about the toxic nature of obsession. And, and also about amazing, delicious, beautiful looking cakes. Beautiful, beautiful cakes. The covers of the manga have a scratch and sniff. On the covers. Oh my god. Do you I did not, not know this? No, I didn't. Oh my god. I've got it around the other corner. The, on the on the front cover of the first one, they're all kind of, their faces are close. The main three characters' faces are close and looking in at this beautiful cake. It's a strawberry cake. And there's a scratch and sniff on the strawberry and you scratch it and it smells of strawberry. Oh my god, that's amazing. How, that's how do you really get inventive. that done? I worked my ass off trying to get a book printed with glitter on the cover. How do you get a scratch and sniff? That's bonkers to me. Oh my god, amazing. And that's the, it's, it's you know, it's the icing on the cake. This, it's yeah. all about making these beautiful, perfect cakes. And they train each other in how to do cake talk and stuff, and they all help each other through difficult times, because they're, they're all people who are broken in some way, or suffering from something. And they kind of a comrade, find a camaraderie within each other, and running this really weird cafe. Which I would so go to. Which I would so go to! Yeah. Antique kind of plates and cups and saucers served yeah. by very attractive individuals uh, with the greatest cake anyone has seen in yeah. Japan slash Korea, depending on which version you're reading. Because <laughs> they said it in Korea, which is understandable, because they yeah. transfer it to there, it's fine. Um, well, it translates yeah, quite I well, because they've got quite that, they've got that little cake shop culture out there quite badly, so it, it works really well as, like, a Korean mm -hmm. set piece. Yeah, I... The director did a really good job because so many of the ideas and set pieces and layouts, they just, they try to show through metaphor rather than say, I did a thing, <laughs> you know, and they, they do say it, but they do, but they show you it first and then they kind of punctuate the harshness of it. And that feels impressive when it happens as well. And it's, it's so kind of drowning in colors in some points and the, the beautiful, delightful music. I feel a lot like this is like a, a young, music. maybe Korean Brian Fuller, uh, the guy who did Pushing Daisies, because that's a similar kind of drowning in colour and effects and visuals uh, in order to get across a feeling. It's really impressive. Thank you for recommending. I need to see the rest because, yeah, I, I, was a, I was not a believer that there was good queer cinema uh, based on adaptations <laughs> of good queer manga because it's so hard to find one. And nigh on impossible to find the other, and it turns out, no, Korea's are there, like, no, we'll do it, Japan won't, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make and... it, why not? <laughs> oh, they do some good stuff. Korea definitely yeah. has some good queer cinema. Yeah, some of the f most fun montages I've ever seen are in that film as well. Because it's like, and now I need to teach him how to, the names of cakes. It's going to oh. bring in the dancing hallucinations. <laughs> oh, I love that. I could literally, <laughs> sugar <music>. fairies. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Oh my god, it's so strange, but so beautiful, and you can't look away. It's just yeah. hypnotic. Korea uh, has a, then... quite a, a thing for like musical numbers in mm -hmm. some of their films, and there's like things like Despero Naughty Girls is another kind of like, oh, it's amazing. The Despero Naughty Girls is like some weird 
musical. Oh, it's been so long since I've seen it, but I remember it being a queer musical that, I don't know, there's all this weird stuff going on. I mean, one of the kids in the school is a cyclops. One of them has the literal embodiment of her despair as a small little beanie toy that lives on her back. And then there's big-haired aliens dancing around the classrooms. This sounds awesome. It is It is a brilliant film, but it's like it's just like, and we're having a film, and here's a magical, whimsical, totally, like, sugar-induced, like, number here. Because, yeah, why not? Awesome. Weird and awesome. But yeah, we have we have seen two awesome things this past month, and totally yeah. recommend. Uh, I believe I picked this one, so do you have a recommendation for me for next time? Yes, I'm going with something that's actually only a volume. So okay. Ooh, just, oh my god. I know, only that's great. just because Const- I, I want someone else to read it that isn't me, which is how I felt about MW. And then after this, I'll start thinking about things that are a bit more weighty. But it's just because it's something <laughs> I found and went... Well, this is different. Um, mm. it, it's also got an anime, but the episodes are only three minutes each, so you can watch all 12 episodes in about two seconds. It's, oh. it's called Lychee Light Club. Lychee Light Club? Yeah. Let's see. In Japan, it's got stage musicals and everything, which I'd love to get a hold of. Oh, wow. And I'm just typing it so, in. So, Lychee is there. in the fruit. Oh, there. right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ooh, interesting kind of cover art. Yes. Very strange. It, yes, <laughs> basically Ooh. yes. This looks uh, more recent than your last recommendation, but still not yeah. super modern. Uh, oh, two thousand six. Not yeah. No, it's close. it's quite it's quite recent, but it's another one of those things that Vertical goes, "Hey, here's something weird," and I go, "Oh my god, Light G Light Club has got released in England," and everyone <laughs> goes, "No, never heard of it," and I'm like, "But why am I the only one that finds this stuff?" <laughs> I was gonna say one look at it is like. Zoe, have you recommended another thing with horror elements? No. <laughs> it's all right. We've got three horror elements in a row. Let's try some. I'll think of something lighter for next time. I've just realised that maybe. Or maybe maybe... I won't. Who knows? Maybe, These are good. Yeah, maybe this is the homoerotic horror podcast. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Because the other thing I reckon I wanted to recommend is okay. I will think of something nice. She says, looking at her Yowie collection and going. <laughs> Join us next time for our review and discussion of Lychee Light Club, and read along in order to join join in and send us your thoughts. That's Zoe's recommendation. My recommendation was going to be watching Tokyo Ghoul. However, that's Zoe's recommendation. My recommendation was going to be watching Tokyo Ghoul. However, then she flipped it around and said Parasite is better and has been an underdog because they came out around the same time. So we're going with Parasite, which is finished and has a closed story, which is so rare for an anime, and Lychee Light Club. Get notified whenever a new podcast episode or a new video by Zoe goes up by subscribing to this channel. Let Zoe spoil you. Meanwhile, MX Harry and their partner Michael curate dragonhorde.co.uk, a website that collaborates with and distributes for independent artists, as well as publishing sex, body, and queer positive comics. Check out the newsletter to hear which events and promotions they'll be at, including Thought Bubble this November. Share your thoughts on what we discussed today in the comments below. See you all next month.